campus kids, my name's Sarah. I'm out at the Roanoke campus. We are so excited that you're here for week four of our May series, Bounce Back. We are talking all about resilience and we have loved it. I hope you have too. Today, we're gonna be talking about heroes of the faith. You're gonna love this story. It's an awesome one. Our bottom line for today is trusting God will help you get back up. Get ready to worship. Praise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. I will. Hallelujah, heaven comes to fight. 
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Some days, some weeks, even some years seem hard. You feel like staying in bed and tugging the covers over your head. You feel like you can't face what's out there. The person who wrote the book of Hebrews knew all about that feeling. We don't know for sure who they were, but we do know this person loved God deeply. They understood that the more we discover about what God has done in the past, the more we can trust God to act now. Listen to Hebrews 11. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. Faith is not just about blindly hoping for the best when we get out of bed. It's taking a long look at the big picture of God's work through history and trusting that God can work out all the hard parts of our story too. The writer of Hebrews goes on to talk about dozens of men and women who faced difficult times yet still trusted God. Men and women who got back up even when things seemed impossible. Just think about Abraham. When he was 75 years old, living a comfortable life, God called him. Abram. Abram spun around. Vast darkness stretched around him while stars wheeled overhead. There's no one. It must be. Is it God? The people of Haran worshipped many false gods, thinking they were real. Abram knew this was something different, someone different. Leave your country and your people. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. You will be a blessing to others. The words of the Lord were staggering. Though Abram had no children now, God promised him enough kids and grandkids to fill an entire country. Okay, God. We read in Hebrews, Abraham had faith, so he obeyed God. He did it even though he didn't know where he was going. Abraham listened. Abraham trusted God, and his journey of faith into the unknown led to God's miracle gift of a son, Isaac. In fact, the entire story of God's people starts with Abraham's simple act of faith. Now let's take a look at Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph. Joseph had faith. Joseph was daddy's favorite, with a colorful coat to prove it. He was even cocky enough to share his dreams with his older brothers. There were 11 stars. That, that's you guys bowing down to me. Joseph's brothers were so angry, they sold him as a slave. Joseph ended up in faraway Egypt, forced to work hard. But instead of sulking, he made a choice to trust God. He forged ahead and did the work in front of him. Over the years, Joseph's situation changed from good to bad, to good to bad, to good again. In each case, Joseph got back up again and trusted God to work out his story. In the end, Joseph was made second in command to the Egyptian pharaoh. I am putting you in charge of the whole land. In this position, Joseph was able to save his entire family, God's people, when a famine struck. Hundreds of years later, God's people, the Israelites, had grown into a great nation, but they were forced to work as slaves. So God called a man named Moses. Moses had faith. Moses, an Israelite, had been raised as the Pharaoh's grandson. But when he grew up, he ran away from Egypt. He lived a quiet life until God called him from a burning bush. Moses. Moses. Here I am. Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. 
The place you are standing is holy ground. Moses was an old man by this time. He probably didn't want to start a brand new adventure, but God called him to face down the Pharaoh of Egypt. The Lord says, let my people go. Moses chose to trust God. He led the Israelites out of Egypt and through the waters of the Red Sea, even as the Pharaoh chased them. For 40 years, Moses led the Israelites through the desert, facing attacks from the outside and complaints from the people. Oy, we had it better in Egypt. And at long last, Moses himself was able to glimpse the land God had promised Abraham so long before. Abraham, Joseph, and Moses are just a few of the people we read about in Hebrews. Enoch, Noah, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel, and the prophets. These people did amazing things through faith. But faith in God doesn't mean that everything will work out perfectly. It means we can keep going because God knows the end of the story and promises to make everything right, both for these individuals in Hebrews, but also for us. We have an incredible opportunity. When we choose to trust God and get back up, we continue the story of these amazing men and women in Hebrews. And no matter what we face each day, we can know that God has planned the perfect end to our story.
Hey, Brandon. Hey, Whoa. I just. Oh. 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 a little super. Oh. 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 Just a little help. Oh. <laughs> what is up? Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, 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 I don't need your help. Just trying to get trying to get to the door. Uh-huh. Hey. I'm fine. I'm just fine. Uh-huh. Look at that. Sample is all good. <laughs> the floor is wet. Just. Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the so-and-so show. Yeah, hey, listen, I want to apologize to everyone in advance. I scheduled my doctor's appointment before the show, but I've been on hold for like two hours. Do you have a doctor's appointment on your computer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a virtual appointment with a faultologist. A faultologist? Yeah. Yeah, it's a doctor that deals with people who have a comedic falling condition. Ah, uh, wait, I'm sorry. You said a comedic falling condition? Yeah, yeah. CFC? Mm. Uh, it, it's when someone can't help falling down for the sake of comedy. I, I've struggled with it my whole life. See? Uh. Oh. A little help. Oh. 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 That was all today. I know. Oh, uh. <clears throat> Here we go. Uh, yes, Dr. Van Newton, hello. Oh, uh, it's Mrs. Van Newton. I've been sued before for letting people call me doctor. <laughs> You know, we're still fighting to have the medical board acknowledge faultology as legitimate medical science. What? That's incredible. Can you believe that? Mm. Well, I'm here to tell you that CFC is a real thing, and I, I'm hoping that you can help me out. Uh, well, John, I reviewed your file. And based on my diagnosis, you were not suffering from comedic falling condition. What? That's th but I fall so much. I'm sorry, you're just clumsy. Uh, uh, really? Well, well, what should I do about that? Well, I'm afraid the clumsiness can't be cured, but I am sending someone over who can help. He should be there any moment. Thanks, Dr. Uh, uh, Miss Van Newton. My pleasure. Wow. Wow, indeed. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Oh, hey. Wow, hey man, come on in, have Don't a seat. Don't mind if I do. Yes. All right, so uh, tell us who you are and what you know. My name is Kenny and I'm a stunt performer. Hey. Oh, like for TV and movies? That's right. Okay, so Miss Van Newton said you could help me with my falls? Totally, half of what I do is falling. Oh, doesn't that hurt? Oh, it can. And before I learned what I was doing, I did get hurt. In fact, my nickname is Cracked Rib Kenny. <laughs> but then I learned how to fall correctly, and it made a huge difference. Oh, well, that's great. Hey, can you teach me how to do a stunt fall? Absolutely. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, first, kids, don't try this at home or the church or the car, wherever you are. We're trained professionals. Got it? No, seriously, I'm asking. You got it? Okay, good. <laughs> With every fall, there is some risk. So you should learn how to fall the right way. Mm -hmm. That way, when you fall, you can get back up. Today, we're going to do a standing back fall. Oh, a standing back fall. Okay. That's right. So the key here is to step back so you soften your blow. You're going to go to your bottom, keep your body rolled, chin tucked, and then you're going to snap your palms facing back. Okay, so what does that look like when it's all put together? Looks just like this. Whoa. Oh, wow, are you okay? Ah, Let totally me... fine. Great. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 I want to try. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so first, step back. Not so stiff. Okay. Keep your knees soft. 
Right. Keep your knees soft. Soft knees, like a ripe avocado, kids. Soft knees. All right, let's do it. Step back. Right. Step back. Keep your chin tucked. Chin tucked. Roll your body. Roll my body. Let your momentum carry you. <laughs> and palms down. Palms down. All right, that's it. Now just get back up and do it all at once. Back to I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this again. Okay, here we go. All right, okay. Step back, soft knees. Chin tucked and... Not bad! Hey, awesome! That's great, so let's put it to the test. How do we put it to the test? Claire. Claire. Ah! Oh. Excellent form. Oh, thank you! That'll do it, Claire. <laughs> yeah! All right, well done. Am I cured? No, you're still gonna fall down, but okay. now you know the right way. You know what, that's awesome. Thanks, Kenny. No problem. Hey, it's Bible Story Time with Kellen. Kellen! Hello, gents. How's it going? Not too shabby. You got a story for us today? I do indeed. Take it away. Our story today comes from the 11th chapter in the book of Hebrews. The writer wrote, Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. That is what the people of long ago were praised for. And then you can read a list of some of those people of long ago. Some people who had faith in God even when times were tough, like Noah. Uh, what is happening? Pump up the volume and let it play. It's Heroes of the Faith, a historical playlist of epic proportions with classic heroes like Abel, Enoch, and Noah. And I would float 500 miles, and I would float 500 more, just to take a zoo across the flood and have a world that God restores. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Yeah. Okay. So Noah was a hero of faith. He couldn't see what God was doing exactly, but he knew that God had been working since the beginning of time. And even though it was hard, Noah did what he knew God wanted him to do. There's also, oh, here we go. And who could forget these faithful heroes? Rahab, Gideon, Jacobed, and of course, Abraham. Now let me get this, you really want my family to move, ha ha ha, leave the land that we call Earth. Now let me get this, I'm gonna have a giant family, ha ha ha, more than the sand on the seashore. That's right. Abraham and his wife Sarah had faith too. They left their home because God made them a promise and they trusted God. They believe they would have descendants that would number the stars in the sky. Descendants like Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham's great-grandson, Joseph. Good, bad, Whatever day I've had, I believe that my faith does go on. Yes, yes, the Lord is always here and that's right here in my heart and my faith's heart. Joseph kept trusting God and getting back up even though he had a hard life. But in the end, Joseph was made a leader in Egypt and during a great famine too. God used Joseph to save his entire family from starvation. Incredible, right? You think that's incredible? Then you'll love this collection. Call now, 1555 Hebrews. 
All of these stories were a part of God's big story, and they can remind you that no matter how difficult things get, God is working to make all things new. It's the end of the road as we know it. It's the end of the road as we know it. It's the end of the road as we know it. God parted the Red Sea. Call now, 1555-HEBREWS, extension 11. That's 1555-HEBREWS, extension 11, to get this once-in-a-lifetime collection of all the heroes of faith. When you hear their stories and how they kept going no matter what, you can be inspired to do the same. Not sold in stores. Um, wow. I mean, that was fun. Absolutely. Those people kept going even when life was really, really hard. Well, yeah, yeah. And they trusted that God was working to make things new. They didn't even know that God would change the world forever through Jesus. They just had faith. That's right. And what's amazing is that we're all a part of God's big story, just like all of those heroes of faith from long ago. That's amazing. Thanks, Kellen. No doubt. I'll see you guys next time. We're a part of an incredible story. Yeah, we are. I mean, hearing how... People have trusted God in their lives has really inspired me. I, uh, you know, even though I may fall sometimes, I can trust God to help me get back up. Oh, that is inspiring. Let's inspire everyone else, shall we? Ah, yes, you bet. Reveal the question. Oh, who inspires you to get back up? That's great. We have stories of people from long ago in the Bible that got back up and kept going. Yeah, you can be inspired by Jesus. He lived a life that still gives us hope today. Or, or maybe you know some people in your life right now that inspire you to get back up. Who are they? Yeah, talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. You know, you inspire me to get back up. Oh, I, I do? Yeah. Oh, well, fall down and let me inspire you. Oh. Get back up, John. Just, just sweep that. Oh. <sighs> How's that? that? How's that? Is that good? I don't know your elbow. No. You go. Tumble the board into you. It's just a Whoop. tumble. Oh, ah! I, I think I, you got I it. I can't do that. That was really actually kind of impressive. It's quite yeah. amazing. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that last part was real. All right. Oh, he really fell. Yeah. Um. Oh, All right. Dog pile. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hey, it's me, Pastor Malik. I wanted to say that was a neat service. Did you enjoy that? Now, I want to say first, congratulations to Pastor Sarah Lewis. She just got ordained last weekend, so she is officially Pastor Sarah Lewis. And also, I wanted to say congratulations to the kids that who already graduated this year and to the kids that are going to graduate into the next grade, you're going to transition up. You have about a week left, probably, or you're already doing it this week. So next week, if you're still in school, push hard. It's the final week. Finish strong. And also, I would like to say our bottom line for this week is trusting God can help you get back up. But our key question of the week is this. Who inspires you to get back up? That could be mom, that could be dad, that could be your favorite celebrity, that could be a football player, that could be anybody. For me, it was my grandfather. He had a lot of resilience. So, question is, who inspires you to get back up? And we'll see you next week before we start making waves. Bye, guys.